Hello everyone, this is Thomas from Zaxcom, and today I'm here to talk to you about the differences between primary and backup compact flashcards inside of your Nomad recorder. The Nomad, just like the Diva and the Fusion, has the ability to record to two compact flashcards at the exact same time. However, they do not record in the same file structure. The mirror card, which is located on the left, gives you the ability to record in a FAT32 based file structure. This means that when you're done mirroring to this card, you can take it out and pop it into any computer, either a Mac or a PC, and it will be able to read it with no problems. The primary card, however, records in something called a MARF file format. MARF stands for Mobile Audio Recording Format. So now you know what MARF stands for, but what does it mean? MARF is a file structure that was developed by Zaxcom proprietary for their hardware. And what that means is that you can't find this file structure in any other recorder on the market. Now why is it so important? This file structure is extremely important to people that need to record in the field. And the reason being is that it makes sure that if there are any power outages, your batteries die, your power gets pulled from your system, it doesn't matter how. If your recorder loses power during a recording, the file that is physically being recorded at that given time will not become corrupted when you turn the machine back on. If you were to take a microphone and split the output to two separate machines, one of them being a Zaxcom Nomad recorder and one of them being a FAT32 based file structure recorder, you will notice that if you pull the power during a recording, you will have a corrupted file on the FAT32 based recorder. On the Nomad, however, you will notice that once the machine regains power, it will notice that it was recording a file and close it properly to make sure that you didn't lose any audio up until the power outage. Now I don't know about you, but I would want this reassurance in the field to make sure that the past half an hour interview that I've been recording isn't corrupted because somebody accidentally tripped over my power cable. With the Nomad, you don't have to worry about these types of problems. And this is because once the Nomad regains power, it will notice that it was recording a file previously when it was on and it will close the file. This makes sure that at least up into the power outage that your audio is preserved. So now that we know the difference between our primary and backup cards, we're going to need to prepare them so we can record on them. So in order to do that, we need to format the cards inside of the Nomad. So if you haven't already, go ahead and insert a primary as well as a backup compact flash card into your Nomad. Also, it is very important that you select a card that will work properly for the primary card slot inside of the Nomad. If you have any questions about what types of cards to use, contact Zaxcom directly or refer to the manual to find out exactly what cards will work in the machine. I can tell you right off the bat that using Transcend compact flash cards that have a speed of 133x work perfectly inside of the primary card slot. There is no reason for you to go anything faster than 133 speed. In fact, using them is not recommended and is more expensive than the 133 speed cards anyways. Don't waste your money and don't deal with the hassle. The 133 cards work fine. So by now you should have the compact flash cards installed in the primary as well as the mirror card slot inside of the Fusion. Once they are, go ahead and turn on the unit. Once the unit boots up to the home screen, go ahead and press the menu button. Once in the main menu, go to My Nomad. From here, you will notice that you have four selections. Mirror Compact Flash Mode, Write Sound Report, Primary Card, and Mirror Card. We'll deal with the first two later. Let's first go to the Primary Card. In this menu, we also have a few options. The first one that we're going to deal with is Format Primary Card. This is what is going to allow you 
to prepare your compact flash card for recording in the MARF file format. Once inside of this menu, you'll notice that it says press star to format the primary card. Let's go ahead and do that. And just to make sure, it will ask you if you are really sure that you want to format the primary compact flash card. If you are sure, go ahead and press star to continue. If not, press back to exit. But let's go ahead and press star so we can prepare this card. Depending on the size of the compact flash card that you placed inside of your Nomad, it may take anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes to format this card. Go ahead and let it do what it needs to do, and when it's done, it will tell you to restart your Nomad. Now, once the machine is back up and running, let's go ahead and go back into the My Nomad section so we can look at the rest of the settings that are inside of these menus and learn about them. So, once again, inside of this Primary Compact Flash menu, we just formatted the primary card. That means that this card is now set up and ready to record inside of the partitions that are set up. So, let's go ahead and take a look at Choose Primary Folder. Once inside of this Primary Folder menu, you will notice that you have 99 folders labeled Z and then a number that will allow you to record into them. Also, if you have already recorded into some of these partitions, you will notice that they will tell you the amount of segments that are inside as well as the size of the partition. So, let's go ahead and select a partition. To do so, use the menu knob to select the partition that you would like to record into and then press the menu button. You will notice a check mark next to the partition that you've decided to record into. Now, go ahead and back out of this menu. Depending on the client that you're working with, you may want to name the current folder that you are using so you can differentiate between different jobs that you're doing. To do so, scroll all the way to the bottom of this menu to edit the current folder name, and then press Menu. Inside of here, you can use the keyboard to change the text of the partition name. If you notice, the menu allows you to scroll left to right depending on how you scroll the knob. However, if this is too time consuming for you, go ahead and hold in the menu button and scroll to go up and down. This will help you get through typing a lot faster. Also, when entering text, if you push in and hold the menu button, you will notice that it will change from uppercase letters to lowercase letters. Once you're done selecting a name, go ahead and press OK. You have now successfully changed the folder's name inside of your Nomad. The other options that we have inside of this primary compact flash menu is to delete the last segment. This will allow you to delete a segment that was recorded by mistake or if the company holds the role. Pressing star will delete the last recorded segment inside of the folder that you're in. If you made a mistake, you can press back to exit. And next is erase current folder. If you enter this menu, it will allow you to erase certain partitions that you are primarily in. For example, if you don't want to swap primary cards and want to just delete a folder of something that you don't need, you can enter this as your primary folder and then go to this menu in order to erase everything that's inside of it. However, since we just formatted this primary card, we don't need to do this because there are no segments recorded inside of this folder. So let's go ahead and back out to the My Nomad menu. So you now know everything that's inside of the primary card menus. So let's go to the mirror card and prepare that one for mirroring. So inside of the mirror compact flash menu, you're going to have a bunch of different options in order to set up your mirror card accordingly. 
However, the first thing that we need to do is format the mirror card. So go all the way to the bottom of this menu and press enter. Inside, go ahead and press the star key to format the mirror card. You will notice that the Nomad mounts the card after it is done formatting it. It is now ready to be turned on and used as a mirror card. Go ahead and press back to exit. Now, let's scroll up to the top and start going through this menu. The first option is Mirror Compact Flash Mode. This is what allows you to turn mirroring on or continuous. The difference between the two is mirroring on allows you to copy to the backup card once you press stop from recording a segment. With continuous mode selected, you're going to have the ability to record to both the primary as well as the backup card at the same time. Recording in continuous mode allows you to be copying to your backup card throughout the day so you don't have to wait at the end of a shoot in order to turn in your media. Next, Folder to Mirror. Inside of this menu allows you to select which folder you want to mirror to the backup card. The Nomad, just like the Diva and the Fusion, gives you the ability to mirror a separate folder than the one that you are currently recording into as your primary partition. If you need to, select a separate folder that you need to mirror. For right now though, we'll leave it in the same folder that we are currently in. Next, you have Start and End Segment. This allows you to specifically pick which segment you want to start mirroring on. For example, if post-production contacts you and says that they need a specific file from a different partition, we have the ability to go and physically copy that specific file instead of having to copy the whole entire partition to give to them. If you need to change the start segment, go ahead and highlight it, press enter, and change the number to the current segment that you need to mirror. Then, press enter to execute. The same goes with the end segment. Next, we have the file type. The options are Broadcast Wave Poly and Broadcast Wave Mono. The differences between the two is that Polyphonic Files allows you to have every single track that you're recording condensed into one file. For example, if you are recording four tracks of audio and hit Record and Stop, you will create one segment, which means you will have one file. However, in Broadcast Wave Monophonic Mode, if you hit record and stop, you will have four separate files, one for each track of audio. Next, we have File Resolution. This allows you to select 24 bits or to dither down to 16 bits. I highly recommend you leaving this at 24 unless advised by post. You also have the ability to set a timecode offset for each file that is mirrored. Finally, we have a Mirror Options menu. Go ahead and enter that. As of this software version, the Nomad has the ability to remember the mirror settings after a power cycle. This machine will remember if it is in on or continuous mode when mirroring files, if the power is turned off. If you want the Nomad to remember the mirror settings after a power cycle, go ahead and turn this on. You have now set up all of the settings for your Mirror Compact Flash Card. Now, go ahead and turn Mirror CF Mode on so it's ready to go. Once you back out of the Mirror Compact Flash menu, you will notice that there is also a Mirror Compact Flash Mode located in the main section of the My Nomad menu. This is just so you don't have to go a few menus deep just to turn on mirroring. The final setting for the My Nomad menu is Write Sound Report. This allows you to write a sound report for the current folder that you are physically in. This will take all of the metadata, scene and take information, as well as track names, and create a sound report that will be put on the backup card as well as the audio. If you decide to use this feature, 
Just make sure that you turn Mirror Compact Flash Mode off in order to write it. Press Write Sound Report. After a few moments, you will notice that the Nomad says Sound Report Done at the bottom of the screen. You are now ready to turn off your Nomad and turn in your audio. Congratulations! You now know how the Nomad, as well as the Diva and the Fusion, use primary and backup cards in order to record audio. If you have any questions, please contact us at www.zaxcom.com. Once again, my name is Thomas Pop. I'm from Zaxcom, and next time we're going to be teaching you about the ENG setup menu and how to prepare your Nomad for recording.